Astor. Astrop is the founder and CEO of Atana. He has a PhD in corrosion sciences and surface physics from KTH Royal Institute of Technology and an MSc in material physics from Uppsala University. Theodore, uh, I hand the mic to you. Please begin. Okay, thank you. Um, so I hope everyone can see the slide. Unfortunately, it didn't work in presentation mode, so I will give it in one by one, so to say. Uh, so uh, my presentation today will be uh, a quick introduction to Atana, and then I will uh, discuss about our core business, and then I will conclude with our new business area, which is diagnostics. Uh, so uh, Atana, we have been around uh, for 18 years. Uh, we have the third generation biosensors, uh, and the idea with that is to sort of uh, perform in vitro assays in an in vivo-like environment so that the experiments we perform mimic what happens in vivo and thereby can uh, provide more accurate results. And this has turned out to be very successful. So, so we have uh, over 140 scientific publications with, with Atana technology. Uh, but most of all, which I will come back to, we have in our contract research uh, analyzed over 70 uh, molecules. And all of the molecules that we have validated that has entered clinical trials has so far been um, successful. So we have 100% track record in clinical trials uh, in the projects that we have been involved in. Uh, so as I said, we have uh, two uh, business area, our core business, which we call Atana Research and Development. Uh, we do both contract research so that uh, you can send samples to us and, and we do background studies and perform the assays and write reports and, and, and help you evaluate how to use the results. Uh, and we also sell our analytical instruments uh, um, for, for those customers who are interested in that. Then last year, uh, we... Uh, started a new business area, Atana Diagnostics, and it's based on the fact that in our uh, core business, we do a lot of uh, drug uh, analysis in blood. So, so we, we, we look on the response fr from um, different kind of drugs in, in the blood, fr from animals or humans. And uh, from that, we can then uh, detect and see the, the quality of different uh, uh, antibodies, for instance. And that turned out to be very useful in uh, during this pandemic. So we, we have a tool to both do diagnostics of, of, uh, of antibodies and uh, also a very useful tool for develop uh, vaccines or, or drugs for, for the COVID-19. Uh, so if we start with uh, our core business, so the basic idea behind Atana is that it's only one out of 10 drug candidates that enter clinical trials that reads the market. And uh, we looked into why. Is that because uh, there are uh, the correct technologies that doesn't, doesn't exist or are technology used in a non-optimal way? What is measured and what is not measured? And what we found out is that nobody is really looking at the interaction between the drug molecule and its target and the drug molecule and other biology, biological entities in uh, an in vivo-like environment. Uh, so we were thinking we can do that. So basically we can put cells on the surface and, and look on how uh, drugs interact with them. And we believe, or we believed when we founded the company that we then could uh, increase the success rate in phase one and phase two studies uh, by looking at off-target interactions in phase one. And if we detect off-target interaction, that means that there's an increased risk for, for uh, side effects. And 
in phase two, we can look at uh, efficacy to see if the drug has a good enough interaction with its intended target. Uh, so basically, where we are is that we sort of, in, in the drug development, go in and validate and select candidates uh, in the end of the preclinical testing prior to, to, to the clinical um, uh, phase one studies. And our ambition is to sort of that double the success rate in clinical trials, basically by, by eliminating some of the ones that will not uh, work uh, and hence uh, then uh, have a better track record in the clinical trials. Uh, so as I said in the beginning, we have uh, so far in our contract research evaluated 79 uh, drug molecules. Uh, we have validated 30 of them and we have rejected 49. Uh, of the 49, one has, to our knowledge, uh, entered clinical trials. And in that aspect, we said that we believe that the efficacy would be too low because uh, there were uh, too many off-target interactions in, in the blood that would efficiently stop the inhibit the interaction with the intended target. And that is exactly what it ended up in the phase two study. So there we were spot on. Then of the 30 candidates that we have validated, uh, many of them have been in the same uh, product, so they have been quite similar. Uh, nine of them have entered uh, phase one studies. Three are ongoing and six have ended the phase one studies all six successfully. So we have a 100% track record of the phase one studies so far. Out of these six, three has entered uh, uh, phase two, and one have uh, ended phase two successfully, and two are ongoing, and, and uh, the second one is very close to be uh, finalized, and it looks extremely good there as well. So even in phase two, we have a 100% track record uh, in the cases we have been involved. So if you then go back to this graph, and you can see that uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, six uh, concluded phase one studies is not statistically so much, but it's still six and all are uh, successful. So we have a higher success rate here. Uh, in uh, phase two, it's only one that has been concluded, but that is so far positive uh, also uh, instead of uh, 30%. So if we use these numbers and then have the same success rate in, in the, the consecutive steps, we actually end up that in, uh, uh, if, if you extrapolate that, uh, basically, every second drug that enter clinical trial would succeed. Uh, I don't think that is entirely due to us, and I, I know the statistics is low, but I think the numbers are good enough to demonstrate that, that what we contribute to have a significantly positive influence on the success rate of clinical trials. Uh, I also believe that many of the customers we are working with, of course, uh, are innovative in other ways as well. So it's not entirely thanks to, to our technology, but I'm 100% sure that we have a great contribute to this increased success rate. So our technology is based on quartz crystal microbalance, QCM biosensor. Uh, and uh, what we do is basically that we have a, a quartz crystal. It's an, a fairly old technology that we have made uh, innovations to and, and have several patterns around. And that enable us to cultivate, for instance, cells or, or uh, suspension cells or virus or bacteria on the sensor surface and then flow over uh, the analytes for instance, a, a drug candidate, 
and then look at the association and dissociation rate and the affinity of these interactions. And we also get uh, information about how many accessible uh, targets there are on the cells. Uh, so that is one very important feature that we can, we can really look on the target interaction in an environment that looks the same as uh, or very similar to, to as it is in vivo. We can also perform the assays in all sorts of uh, buffers. So we can do it in whole blood, sera, plasma. We can do it in cell media. And we can do it in different kind of buffers like PBS. Um, and the good thing with this is that you also get an in understanding for how much the interaction varies with the media. And it's actually quite a lot. And that can also be used to compare for instance, flow cytometry in, uh, information with functional uh, assays and, or SPR data because they all have different media when you perform your experiments. And since the interaction is different, you will get different results. So we can help bridge the gap in between there. So what that basically means is, is that we, we uh, work with, in particular, these kind of uh, molecules. And we have several different assays that can be cell-based, virus-based, biochemical, tissue-based, in, in CRI, in, in, or in, in different kind of buffers. And uh, as I mentioned, the, the main thing we look into is, is kinetics and affinity, but we also get uh, uh, an active number of uh, receptors and, and uh, other kind of information. And all these we then uh, used to tell uh, the customers uh, uh, whether the molecule is validated and, and can proceed to the next step, or if we believe that there could be some optimizations, for instance, that one could need to remove off-target interactions and thereby can increase uh, the likelihood of success or if you just should forget it. But usually it ends up with either uh, of these. So, uh, as I said, we have the contract research as our offering, which is basically that, that uh, we set up a, a project description together with the people we work with and, and do background studies. We, uh, we receive the samples, uh, which can be the drug molecules, uh, cells or virus and, and other things. We perform uh, the, the experiments and, and we have necessary assets for that and, and we provide reports. Or um, you can buy the instrument and uh, as with all analytical instruments, you can of course buy uh, asset supplies and, and we have technical support both for, for service of the instrument and, and for, for assay setup. Uh, then, as I said, uh, a lot of the assays that we have been performed has, has been uh, looking at the interactions in whole blood on sera, and that is uh, a very good diagnostic tool. And I think mo most people ha have realized that uh, just to say whether or no you have antibodies isn't enough. Uh, it's important to understand uh, the quality of the immune response and that's where we come in. So we have uh, developed a generic uh, uh, in vitro diagnostic device where you can basically put uh, a virus or bacteria or, or, or like the, the spike uh, protein on our sensor chips and flow over uh, either whole blood or CRO plasma and look at the response. And then you, you can see whether... Uh, different kind of, of interactions occur and if this is a good uh, immune response or not. And uh, I think it's this is also very important that we can do it with only a single drop of blood. And that's not only for diagnostics. That's also very good when you do drug development. For instance, if you work with mouse studies and you don't have so much uh, blood, we you can use our technology and you will still have... have uh, samples left for other technologies. We have uh, validated uh, uh, our platform for the SARS-CoV-2 and also for uh, tetanus. 
Um, and uh, we not only provide uh, the yes or no answers, we also provide the uh, concentration, the quality of the interaction, and so on. And we are now in the phase that we are, are looking for partners for, for sales and distribution of this platform. So uh, this is how it looks. Uh, here on the y-axis, you have uh, the frequency response, which in a simplified way, you can say that is how much mass that is interacting with the surface. And here you have the time. So what we do is that we mobilize something on the surface. In this case, it's um, uh, RBD of, of the spike, but it can also be the entire virus or, or bacteria or, or any other kind of protein that you're looking for, like we also validated with the, the tetanus. Uh, so once you have this surface, uh, you take up a baseline and then you inject the sample which can then be a whole blood or, or zero plasma. And then you can see an increasing signal. So here you have three different individuals and a control uh, zero sample. Uh, what you can see here is then the full interaction between, in this case, the spike and all components that interact with the spike in the blood. You can see that it differs between uh, uh, the different individuals. Uh, at this stage, and I can also say that you can also get kinetics out of this. Uh, at this stage, we stop supplying uh, the blood and let the buffer flow over. And then uh, most go away, but you can see uh, that uh, some remain more strongly bound on the surface, which then can be uh, IgG antibodies, it can, be, it can be IgM or IgA, or it can be other stuff. But what's also interesting is that you can see that this dark blue line here, it has a higher signal here when the blood interacts, uh, but a lower signal than this one uh, of the more strongly bound. So this means that there are these two individuals, they have a different... Uh, immune response, not only in, in, in the amount, but it's also different uh, things that uh, uh, interact with the spike protein. Uh, here we can also, depending on if you just want quick answers, we can, we can run this much faster. Or if you want to have a full kinetic approach, you also look on the off rate, uh, the dissociation rate. And that is important because if you have an antibody response, you want it to stay as long as possible. So that the longer it stays, the better is the quality of your immune response. And this is sort of unique for us. And then we can then inject, for instance, anti-IgG or anti- and or we can do everything in, in the series, IgM, IgA. So we can see what is the different components of the strongly bound interaction. Uh, we can also, and, and we have done, for, for instance, uh, in, if you look in the handouts, there is a paper from Salanti, and all they, they publish on data where they have the ACE2 receptor on the surface, and then they have looked on, on how Spike interact with it. Uh, you can also do a competition assays here, so, so you can, for instance, Add If you have spike here and you add spike to your blood, you can see that you decrease the signal. Uh, so you can also look on the sort of uh, inhibiting effects of, of the, the blood. <coughs> so uh, this we have then been in, used by, by customers who develop uh, vaccine or, or, or looking for therapeutics against COVID. We are currently doing a project with uh, about 500 persons uh, in, in collaboration with um, uh, academic partners uh, where, where we look on both uh, people who have been uh, infected. Uh, so we have blood before they were infected, while they were infected, and after they are infected. 
and uh, we also have the same with with uh, healthy people and then who are being vaccinated and doing follow up of that uh, these are ongoing studies so i cannot show you all the good stuff but uh, this is just to show how it can vary between different individuals so here we have uh, one individual who has received one um, dose uh, in this case is that's a seneca vaccine but it doesn't matter uh, this is more to show the big spread between people one dose of the 31 days uh, and this individual here has received the, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, and this is seven days after the second dose, uh, 28 days after the, the first dose. Uh, here you see the full blood interaction, and you also see the reproducibility uh, between uh, the, the difference when we re repeat the experiments. And you can see that. Uh, here we have around uh, 25 hertz at this peak and around uh, between 5 and 8 in, in the more strongly bound. Whereas here we have over 50, so more the double the, the response. And, and uh, the hard binding here is, is 40, so it's more than four times compared to this individual. Uh, what you can see, it's not that clear, but that it's the off rate here, it's much lower uh, than uh, compared to this individual. So in this case, you can see that this person has both more and, and probably a better quality of, of their, their response. And then we have in, uh, show you here uh, for IgM, the gray and IgG. So you can see uh, in, in this small here that there's a, even though it's, it looks, it's not so much, it's a significant, uh, from a measurement point of view, response. Uh, so it's easy for us to detect and, and see the different components. Uh, uh, but uh, it has much lower here, like four hertz compared to the uh, 60 hertz of the IgG. So we have injected anti-IgG and anti-IgM and look at the response. Here, so uh, we we think this is an excellent tool also to, to see uh, the immune response of, of people uh, for sort of to know if they are good or not, but uh, if the vaccine is efficient. And but it's also from a research perspective, what is good enough? Uh, it's not really clear, at least when, when I read it, how, how much do you need to have a. a a strong um, immune defense. So, so this is also what we hope to correlate uh, later on or, or if other work with this. Uh, I was uh, I like to stress that this is just finger strips, uh, sticks, so it's just one drop of blood to, to perform these assays. And, and um, we aim at uh, be able to, to provide uh, the, the results between uh, 10 to 15 minutes after you, you, you take the stick until the individual has his uh, result. Uh, and uh, to summarize this, what we are hoping for is to, to be able to, to contribute with a tool to judge uh, uh, how immune a person is that has been vaccinated. So uh, we, we think there are several aspects. It's not just yes or no if you have a certain antibody or T cells or so. So in this case, we, we have the first non-specific uh, immune response. That is when the blood is interacting. Uh, and and uh, it, we have seen, uh, of course, that, that people who have been infected and recovered well, they have a quite strong non-specific immune response. Uh, then we can measure the, the concentration of the different antibodies, how much. We can also measure the quality, that's, that's the, the uh, off rate. And, and then, of, of course, then to, to, to separate it between, for instance, then IgA, IgM, and IgG. And we think this part will sort of be more important in, in like a point of care because you want to see 
since you can take this easily on a daily basis, you can see how your immune response develops uh, for, for IgA, IgM, and IgG. So one can build up a better understanding on what kind of treatment do people need, how long do they need to be in quarantine, and, and these kind of, of questions. Uh, and we also see, that, of course, that man can test for, for different, so you are well vaccinated if, if you're out traveling. And it's important also for, for, for people if you want to send people, uh, your, your employees, for instance, to different regions where there are uh, a lot of, of uh, um, diseases. So you know if, if you have a good protection. So this is sort of where we hope to end uh, when this project is uh, finalized. Um, so uh, uh, as I said, at Atana Diagnostics today, we have validated across all blood sample types. So whole blood, sera, and, and plasma. We have an ongoing uh, study with over 500 patient, patients uh, where we look over time. So before they have been... Uh, when they are healthy, uh, when they have been infected or vaccinated, and when they have recovered or, or how well the, the, the um, uh, uh, vaccine has uh, produced an immune response. And, and we are validated with different uh, technologies on the market. Uh, we, will, uh, we have completed an FDA medical device class one listing of uh, our technology and, and we are then going to file for the, the class two once these studies are done. Uh, and uh, basically, yeah, so that's what we are doing right now, CBD and FDA uh, emergency use uh, for this. And uh, in the long time, we hope to have this as a generic diagnostic platform where we be, will be the technological partner and, uh, and we will have uh, partners who do the business for us. We believe that this can be also used in companion diagnostic and, and for point of care versions of the instruments. Um, so to summarize, uh, if you work with drug development and in particular with biopharmaceuticals and you want to validate and make sure that you make the right, uh, select the right molecules prior to the clinical trials, or if you observe inconclusive results in phase one or phase two, please contact us and we will try to help you. If you're interested in our diagnostic tools, uh, it's good both for, for research, of course, uh, when you're developing vaccine and so, but we are also looking for research lab to, to, to sort of uh, set uh, different kind of, of limits for, for this and, and also looking for partners in data analytics and, and sales and distribution. So uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, your attention.